So this differential equation, right, minus uh, x plus square divided by 2m, d squared psi dx squared equal v e uh, psi is the same as the free account, right? You can see it's the same as free account. But there's only one difference between free account and this one uh, in the square well problem. The square well problem, uh, outside the square well, there's no wave function. The electron cannot escape, so the wave function is zero, okay? Which means that you have boundary conditions, so-called boundary conditions, because you may have some wave function here, but at the wall of this uh, boundary, the wave outside boundary must be zero like this. You may have wave like this, but outside must be zero. So at this point, at the boundary, uh, the, the wave function inside the wall must terminate, must go to zero. Otherwise, uh, it would not work. It would not move smoothly, right? The reaction would not, the wave function would not behave smoothly, okay? So you can then, because of this boundary condition, the, the fact that you have two wall, infinite, infinite wall, uh, the wave function, you set the wave function here at x equals zero, wave function at x equals L, must be zero. That's because it cannot escape. Then, uh, what happens? Then uh, you don't get the, you don't get the free electron solution anymore. Uh, what you get is that if you solve this equation, right, with this boundary condition, setting, setting two value at the boundary to be zero, what you get is actually a sine function. You get a uh, uh, sine kx, right? And k here, interestingly, is constant. See, k here is an integer number uh, of the inverse length, right? So here is a plus or minus n, right? Uh, you have n could, uh, is, a con is a quantum number. This is why it's called quantum mechanics. Quantum means discrete number uh, of one, two, three, and so forth. It cannot be um, anything. It has to be integer. This n has to be integer. And this is called a quantum number. Just like your, uh, your, your hydrogen atom, you have quantum, quantum number, principal quantum number, n, right? And, uh, and this k uh, depends on the inverse length of the box. And the box's length is L. So you have uh, a multiple of inverse length, right? Inverse length is 1 over L, okay? And your energy is the same. Same idea, uh, x bar squared divided by 2mk squared, right? So here, instead of k squared, you have k n squared, and the n identify the quantum number that you have in here, okay? So the major consequence of the boundary condition is that you create a compensation, okay? So now, once you put it in the box, the energy is quantized, and the wave function is a standing wave. So the picture you have is like this. So this is the solution I draw inside the wave function psi here um, uh, as a function of x. So, so I want to really draw this. Uh, this outside here has to be zero. So the wave function is zero. When it hit this point, it's zero again. Same here, it's all zero, like this. So that corresponds to these two directions. We do the compensation. And then, uh, and then this wiggle, of course, is, is the periodicity corresponding to n n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 3, and the energy changes. So here I draw the energy level, uh, n equal 1, you have 1 unit times this. n equal 2, you have, because it's proportional to, uh, to n squared, you see, if you expand uh, e, the energy here, it's proportional to n squared, so it becomes 4 unit of that. It, it, if n equal 3, it becomes 9 unit of this constant. So you have quantization of energy level. That's that's the major consequence of these uh, boundary conditions. Okay. So I, I think hopefully if you have taken quantum mechanics class, you would know this. But if you have not taken quantum mechanics class. All I want you to get out is that you can solve you can solve for an equation like this, a differential equation like this, uh, with uh, with a with a solution. And this is a, a gas solution. And the consequence is that you have compensation of energy level and the wave function looks like this. Now, probably a lot of you have not seen, except probably the physicists may have done, 
the double square well problem, which is a little bit harder problem, but you have interesting phenomena come about. Uh, the interesting phenomena, of course, is tunneling effects between the square and well. So the picture you have is, is like this. So let me expand my picture like this, right here. So you think of the, the problem is like this. You have two square wells, right? Two square wells next to one another. Uh, and in between this, so on the outside, uh, outside part of the double square well, the potential is, is infinite. So the, the electron must be trapped inside the two infinite walls that you have here. In between the square wells, there's a, there's a barrier, right? Uh, in, the, in the single square well problem, this will become an infinite wall as well. But, uh, but in the double square well, we can, we can play some uh, interesting game. We, can, we don't have to make it an infinite wall. We can make it a barrier. In other words, it's just a constant in between uh, these two points that you have. And we can, we can vary this barrier height. We can vary this barrier height. V naught is our barrier like this. Okay? And we can define, you know, we can define uh, the spacing here, you know, this is my C, you know, this is my C here, two C spacing, plus or minus C here, and uh, plus or minus, uh, so this is C, this is uh, plus or minus C plus A, you know, this is my C plus 2A, C plus 2A of this, the width of a single well, okay? So this is, this is the picture. This is, I have a very weird uh, potential, right? And I can solve for this uh, double square well in three different regions. Okay, so first of all, uh, in region uh, two and three, right? You can see the region two and three; they are symmetrical, right? Except that they are sort of positioned in different direction. Um, and in region one is the interesting one where you have a uh, uh, barrier, right? Uh, wave function also could exist inside the barrier, right? Uh, no wave function can exist outside, so the wave function will be zero because it's infinite square well. But in uh, in this barrier, the wave function can go from here to here, right? So all these, the wave function has to be continuous. This is one of the postulate of quantum mechanics. This wave function must connect to this one, and uh, it must go across somehow, penetrate the the, the barrier, uh, and connect to the other side. Okay, so, so this is the interesting part. This is the part that gives you tunneling effect and, uh, and a new uh, quantum phenomenon. Okay, so how do you go about so, uh, solving this? Uh, rather simply, uh, you again, the electron in a, in a double square well problem, so you, have, you first define your potential, just like what we have here, which is, which is in an expanded scale in here, okay? Uh, you define it uh, to three region. Region one is the barrier, two and three, right? So we have to have three different uh, regions. So zero uh, inside the barrier. So in region two and three, the potential is zero. Uh, in region one, which is the barrier, the, po the potential is equal to the barrier height, which is V naught, right? So this is between C plus or minus C x between plus or minus c, and then outside your barrier, uh, your, your well, uh, is infinite, okay, just like a single square well. So outside here is infinite. So then uh, the approach is the same. You use the Schrodinger equation, no, no squared there. Uh, you use, uh, you then separate. So, so the approach in, in solving it this way is that you separate your, your region, right? You first uh, what you do is that you first solve for the solution in each of the separate region, right? And then you look at your boundary condition and connect, piece them together. Connect the solution in one uh, of the region to the other at the boundary. Because those the, at the boundary, the solution, both of the solution must be the same, right? Because otherwise you would have the discontinuity in your wave function. And that is not allowed in quantum mechanics. So, uh, so what have we got? Uh, we got, we take the V naught, we rewrite the very high into a slightly different way, into x pi, uh, x pi, uh, x bar square, alpha square, divided by 2m, is a little bit more friendly way of writing it. 
Uh, and then we can solve for region two and three. Region two and three is easy because it's just like the single square wave problem because the potential is zero. Okay, so you have this uh, equation, and uh, and you can uh, write generically, right? Right, go back to first principle instead of writing psi function. You can you can always start up with a plane wave going in either direction, a linear combination of plane waves. Okay, OG stand for what you get is my sort of angle. Uh, and, and you can treat this, right, both uh, wave function in two and three as plane wave going in this linear combination of plane wave going in the opposite direction with a k vector k and minus k uh, in, in different directions. Uh, in region one, which is the very high region, very high region, this is where the action is, uh, we have to uh, 